previously on Unmasked. Matt Rule is finalizing a deal to become the next head coach of the Carolina Panthers. Oh! I still remember my first press conference in this building. Now it's time to move in a different direction. I'm still trying to, I'm still trying to process that I'm here right now. Everyone wants to say they won the Super Bowl, but not everyone's willing to do what it takes each and every day. Set up for returner, run our feet, finish it on the upfield shoulder, no different. Once you get to that point, rip, rip and go. Hold on, I apologize. I don't know if I need this. Hey, what's up? What's up? Tornado? You had to take cover at school? Yep, head down. Yep, knees, head down between your knees, hands over top of your head. Hey, you guys haven't met Mr. Ed yet, have you? Can you guys say hi to Mr. Ed, Coach Ed? Hi, guys. That's Landon. What's going on? And there's Wyatt, that's the youngest, and then I don't know where Bentley is. What are you, are you getting ice cream? I mean, you got an ice cream cone. I don't know what else you're putting in there. Megan, are you, Megan, are you trying to get in front of the camera or what? There's my wife, Megan. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ed. <laughs> you too. All right, boys. Hey, be good, please. Once you have your ice cream, calm back down. While change has been the early theme of the Panthers offseason, Chase Blackburn has been one of the constants. Whether he's educating his son about tornado drills or bringing on a new coach, Blackburn's approach remains the same. He's a teacher, a quality that led Matt Rule to rehire the former NFL linebacker as Carolina's special teams coordinator. You know, Chase was a player at the Giants when I was there, and um, I, I want to be great on special teams. I don't think you can have a great team if you're not great on special teams. And so uh, Chase has been here. He knows the league. He knows the roster. <clears throat> and in talking with him, it became, became clear right away that, that uh, he was going to be every bit as good a coach as he was a player. Brady, for the moment, avoids the sack, slips away. He's going to launch it deep. And it's going to be intercepted by Chase Blackburn. Ronkowski against the middle linebacker. You take it every time. And it is remarkably <laughs> Blackburn who makes the saving play. While linebacker was Blackburn's position during a 10-year playing career, he was also a major contributor on special teams, giving him a unique perspective of that unit. But with a new staff comes new terminology, and combining two sets of language takes time. The most important thing we know when these guys come in um, having an understanding that we know exactly everything we're doing inside now. So there's no miscommunication between Ed and I or any other coach. The, the, the terminology relates to the new offensive coordinator, defensive coordinator. That's a big part of what we're trying to do. Yeah. You're back door to the returner. Yes, back door from the returner direction. You would say back door of the actual blocker. We would use, that's how we did it. That's I got gonna, you. That'll take me a so minute. So that one, that's a different. That'll, that'll take me a minute. Vice versa, opposite. So it's the same thing. You're going to scrape that arm right in front, scrape paint, get your whole back turned to him, and it's going to become like a box out it's, as you go through it. It's funny that whatever, wherever it came from, because these guys for this term, because we'll talk about this on defense, okay. they call it worship. Call it worship because you're, you're, you're like, yep. you know, like whatever it is. So <laughs> right. there's, there'll be a terminology difference here with our defensive guys doing this because they talk about doing doing this like on an interception return or something right. like that. If it sounds differently coming from me than it does from the defensive coordinator and we're doing similar things, it's not right, right? And that's for me to adjust. And so trying to figure out, it's great for me because Ed has been with them. So he knows their terminology. Obviously I have my own terminology and now we can kind of merge it and figure out what fits best. When Ed Foley and his colleagues leave the office, the onboarding process doesn't stop. Becoming familiar with a new city is another challenge that often requires coaches to live out of a hotel and away from their families for the better part of a month. Uh, it's tough. Uh, my daughter's going to finish out school, so towards the end of May, they're, you know, we'll get them here in Charlotte. Unfortunately, in this profession, they get used to it, so my daughter I think it's moved three times in the last four years, which is not fun. But the toughest part is one, the constant, like you're trying to be very good at your job and you're trying to learn your job and learn your new environment. Uh, 
along with trying to make sure your family's okay back home, along with trying to be the best coach that you can possibly be, and the best dad you can possibly be, and the best husband you can possibly be. So I think that's the, uh, that's the number one, not struggle by any stretch of the imagination, but that's the, the number one priority throughout this whole deal and whole transition. While much of the coaching staff deals with missing their immediate family, the machine keeps turning as they prepare for a trip with their football family to Indianapolis for the NFL Combine. In the simplest terms, what is the NFL Combine? <laughs> um, from a football standpoint, it's, it's, a, um, it's a piece of the puzzle that helps you separate players in the certain categories. We are up there to, to basically evaluate players and try to, to help us improve our decision-making process for the three days of the draft. So it's, it's a very intensive process, but you know that's why you do this. These are all little pieces of the puzzle that you have to put together and make the right decisions, and it comes down to who fits you best. Yeah, I'm just close with this. I'm so confident we're being as uncomfortable. It's easy to be there. All I want is a little commitment. And you can't give me that. That that's just me. You can't give me that. I mean, obviously there's so much. Um, stuff out there around surrounding Cam and, and so much misinformation and how are you going to handle the 30 Cam questions you get? At the end of the day, the thing that the thing is is that everything's been said about Cam has been said by everyone else, right? And I, it's my chance to finally say how I feel, and, and then you know how I feel. Like I'm, I'm excited. Like uh, I, I, I can't wait to get started. And so, and I think also like it, it deserves to be said how hard he's working. You know what I mean? To to rehab and to. Because the stage that he's at coming back from that injury, it's not just about like the hard work, like lifting, it's about all the little details. And so I'm going to get up there and say, I can't wait for him to be healthy and I can't wait for a chance to work with him. And I'm excited about the future with him and excited about who he is and even getting to know him. Like I, I didn't know him before this and like I've loved getting to know him. So I, I think I'm just going to say that. And know? I think you've said over and over how excited you are just to see him on the field for oh, the yeah. first time. What if they do go to, um, Questions about if he's going to be the starter opening day. What's your thoughts yeah. on that? Well, I just don't. I don't think it's right to talk about anybody, um, you know, on the roster as being a starter or being. You know, what I mean, like at the end, you know, we're all brand new. I think, I think, you know, just being process oriented, just saying, hey, he's going to worry about getting healthy. This guy's going to worry about getting healthy. This guy's going to worry about one of this. Everyone just needs to worry about those things right now and just keep it the combine. Keep it. Keep it, you know, obviously I'm hopeful that guys are, you know, the starters, but I, I don't think it's fair to start saying, hey, this guy's the starter here, this guy's the starter there. Um, what does that do for the other guys in the locker room? I, I want everyone to walk in just excited about day one of the off-season, you know, off-season program, but day one of OTAs, day one, you know, does it make sense at all? Or? All the stuff you said, Got it. I wouldn't make it too long, but if you hit those, kind of set the stage for yourself. How long of a session do you get? Probably about 15 minutes. All right, let's do it. If there's any shots that make me look fatter than I am, if, if it's as fat as I am, I'm fine. But if you get a bad angle, it's on you, bro. I got you. I'm just telling you. Hey. How are you? How are you Good to see you, man. How you been? Good. What are you doing? Yeah. Nice, nice, yeah. nice, 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 nice. You know, there's a lot of pressure on you from the standpoint every coach Marty has hired has gone to a Super Bowl. Wow. Wow. I just gotta go win it. No, no. <laughs> I say we do that. Let's go do the bench press. How many reps are you putting up, Coach? I'm gonna have Coach Ocam do it for me. Frank can do 32. Nixon can do it probably about 20 some. I'll give you my best effort. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm having fun so far. So. Oh yeah, you should be happy. Just, you know, trying to trying to make sure I do a good job here at the combine. So. Yeah. Well, now it's just it's just a matter of just hopping from one interview together. Right? <laughs> That's right. You just kind of say the same thing over. <laughs> That's right. Where am I going? Podium three. Oh, I thought it was my podium. I was like. You think I'm not athletic enough to jump up there? You could. Come on. You want to. Come on. I have to stand. Love it. Love it. Come on. Come on. Guys, how are we doing? All right. I thought I'd open up with a couple words real quick, and then I'll take your guys' questions. But um, thrilled to be here. Um, 
you know, we know how important the combine is, and uh, we obviously have seven picks in the draft, really important picks. This is the beginning for us of a very disciplined process. Uh, we know that we have a, a tremendous job ahead of us to put together a great team, and I, I think it all really starts here. So I know there'll be a lot of questions about Cam. Um, my son keeps calling me, asking questions. So uh, I, figured, um, I figured I'd address that right off the bat. I'm excited to get him healthy. Obviously, um, you know, that's the number one goal for us. Um, he's doing a great job of doing his part. We have to make sure that we're doing our part. But uh, I know you guys have lots of questions, so I'll go listen to you guys. Matt, Matt, if Matt. he is healthy, will he be your starting quarterback? I, I probably won't say about anybody that, they'll, hey, they'll be a starter. I'll try to be really, you know, um, especially in my first year, try to be really um, uh, disciplined about not promising things to certain guys. I'll just say that I really want him on the team and I really want him to be healthy. And um, I won't speculate maybe on the future of really any player on our team, you know, but I'd like to get him healthy. I'd like to get him out there. Thanks, guys. Chris Sims. <laughs> the hot life. Hi, Michael. Good to see you, man. Good to see you, man. How are you? Ready? Yes, sir. Continuing our coverage of the 2020 Scouting Combine in Indianapolis, joining us now, the brand new head coach of the Carolina Panthers. He is Matt Rule. And I say brand new. It's been several weeks. It probably already seems like you've been on the job for a long time. It does. It, feel, it, it, it really feels like years, and, uh, but in a good way. You know, you take one of these jobs, you show up, and you're excited, and, and then it's just kind of get to work and start just slowly, methodically making sure you're ready. So I, I think we've made a lot of progress so far. I'll give you the, I'll give you the best I got. <laughs> Thanks very much. We're here on our CBS Sports HQ set. Jamie Eisenberg, Pete Prisco, and Matt Rule, the Panthers head coach, joining us here from the Combine. People will talk about expectations. Do you set some for yourself as you get ready for 2020? You know, I think we're too far away from that right now, to be quite honest. I think right now my expectations are really about this combine and then the off-season program and then the draft. Um, you know, I, I haven't even met all the players yet on the team, so it, it'd be hard for me to start making a bunch of, you know, predictions or comments. I just know that right now the, the team's going to be built through the draft first, and so we have to make sure we do a great job at the combine. Fair enough. Certainly appreciate the time. Enjoy it. Thank you very much. Year. As I said, I didn't say anything stupid. <laughs> it was good. It was good to have a chance to get out there and talk about the team and talk about where we're headed. You've had this shrimp cocktail here, haven't you? You gotta have this shrimp cocktail. How do you have that? Shrimp cocktail, you guys both hadn't had it? I had it. It's the same as uh, St. Elmo's. Yeah. Tell them if I can get your attention, please. My name is Muhammad and this is Amy. We'll both be taking care of for today. Uh, feel free to go ahead and walk around and get some food and have some lunch. All right? What's up guys? Um, just want to take a few minutes and welcome everybody. Thanks for uh, taking time. I know Kanban's crazy busy, but thanks for just coming. You know, what we want to do is create as many opportunities for us to create community and people to get to know each other in fellowship. So I know it's not easy getting over here, but we appreciate you coming. Um, we'd like to make a toast to new beginnings. I think Marty would be the appropriate person to do that. I'll have a laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, you Yeah, I'll do it. Um, welcome again. Um, this is my 26th uh, combine. So for the new guys, it doesn't get any better. It's going to be a lot longer. Enjoy the day because Thursday, Friday, Saturday are long days. But we appreciate your patience and everything. Um, again, a toast to a great new beginning. It's great to have everybody going in one direction, all right? And this is only the beginning. Tonight, and it's now time for the 2020 
NFL scouting combine. And first up, TE1. What you want to come in? Four, five, nine, four, six, one. On a, like, they put down that rubber track. Is it really? You know, my school called in four, five, two, four, five, six. That'll get you the fifth one. First 40, it's a 4-8 flat. I just want to see it through smooth. How, how like, I'm not really worried about the time. I mean, because we don't really know what the defense we're talking about. I just want to see it through smooth, who's not. Uh, and then, obviously, once we get to the point, it'll get more clear. But I just want to see who looks like an athlete. 4 5 2 4 4 9 and 4 5 flat. That's a fast tight end here. He was driving. Hello. You think it I have no conviction for the kid to make up. Just make him read the Panther profile and then read how I talk about his talent and you know, kind of all bring it together. And I... Times you're looking for here, 4.62, that's the average. If you look at the top 10 tight ends in terms of receiving yards, that's the number. You're slow, you're slow, man. <laughs> no thinking. <laughs> There's nothing you can do. There's nothing you can do. Coach, because when he asks these kids where they think they're going to run, so they're going to go, you know what you're Exactly. <laughs> well, the problem is some of these guys, they go to these places, they train them, and they tell them, oh, you ran 4-4-2 four, four, the other day, and then they come out and they run 4-6. Just train them and keep them happy. Right. With the beast of the combine coming to an end, the Panthers leave Indianapolis with their sights set on an entirely different monster, free agency. With many familiar faces already gone and others set to hit the open market, an intrigue-filled offseason is just heating up.